Do you know what, guys? I'm really impressed with that performance. Welcome back to Operation Arsenal. We are dissecting the game against Brentford in the EFL Cup round three. And um, honestly, looking at the team we started with today, I'm surprised that we actually did that. And when I say did that, I'm not surprised that we won. You know, we could always turn up and win. We, we did very well at Brentford last season. Um, but I did see the lineup and I thought, ooh, it's going to be an interesting one. You know, a young team. Oh, well, all, all Arsenal teams are young. But to see someone like Sago Jr. make a debut for the club at, I think he's 17. Oh, he's 19. Okay, so he's a little bit older than I thought. Um, Smith Rowe getting his first start in well over a year. Kivior starting at left back. Um, Jorginho starting after a pretty horrific sub appearance in the North London derby. But um, the real surprise for me today was Nelson. I was really impressed with him. I thought Nelson was fantastic. Uh, quick word on Brentford because I'm a big fan. I really like Brentford. I really appreciate the way they play. I can understand that it's not always pass and move, beautiful tiki-taka football, but they're capable of that. But they can also be really super dynamic, smash it down the pitch, be ultra aggressive, push and shove and, and be very physical. And they're not easy to beat. There's a reason they beat City twice last season. There's a reason so many clubs go to, what is it, the G-Tech Stadium, <laughs> whatever they call it, um, and, and don't get results. Brentford are extremely difficult to beat at home. And we've done it with quite a few changes to the team. We had uh, Gabby Jesus come on um, with Zinchenko in the 69th minute and then a couple more subs after the 80-minute mark. Erdegaard came on and instantly added quality. Elneny, so good to see Elneny back. I love the guy, the Egyptian king. Um, and then Cedric came on as well, which I thought was quite hilarious. Um, so, yeah, the, the best way to explain this game, if you look at the stats, you're going to think, oh, Arsenal dominated. But realistically speaking... We had more of the ball, but Brentford seemed to do a lot more meaningful things with it. They did have some very good chances. I thought Visser, who is normally, or Wisser, Visser, he's normally quite good in front of goal in terms of being efficient and actually putting the ball in the back of the net, but he just wasn't able to do that today. And Ramsdale had to make some big saves. Um, also, shout out to Kivior for the goal line block. Oh my God. We do need to talk about Kivior before we move on. Um, young Polish player that has come in from Italy. And honestly, I think he might be one of the most technically gifted defenders I've seen in a while. With the ball on the ground, I haven't seen many better that play in his position. I think Gabriel, and by the way, these guys are the wrong way around. Okay. And actually, Tommy Yassi was playing right centre back. So this is all wrong. Ben White was right back. Tommy Yassi was here. And Gabriel was here. Um, Kivior was doing his best version of a Zinchenko inverted role. He definitely doesn't go as central. He definitely does stay a bit wider at times, but he was coming short, getting the ball, his passing, actually his first touch. He is so composed. And I think that is such a good quality to have in such a young player. I think he could be a really good player for us in the future. Um, I thought Ramsdale had a really good game as well, despite with what's going on. You know, is he the first team goalkeeper anymore? It's debatable. Um, and Jorginho, honestly, ticking everything in midfield, keeping it ticking. I mean, just the engine, the clock of the team. And yeah, he had a really bad time against Tottenham when he came on. But today he made up for it. I thought he was incredible. Um, Havertz. So difficult because he reminds me of Meza Ozil so much. He has a very lethargic approach to football. He's so slow and he's... He, he, it's like he doesn't actually want to be there ever. <laughs> it's such a weird, uh, I don't, I don't get it. I'm really struggling to understand what Arteta has seen there. Sure. If that was the Leverkusen version of Kai Havertz that we signed, totally get it. He looked phenomenal out in Germany and very rarely in Ch in a Chelsea shirt did he show any of that. And he, he, he looked like he looks now at Arsenal, just very lethargic, <sighs> slow, just slow. But then there are moments he has such good quality. His, his one-touch football is very impressive. The way he flicks on the ball, he wins a lot of headers because he is tall, he is physical. Um, 
but I just don't quite see it yet. It's now eight appearances with no goals or assists. Not ideal. But going back into the stats here, as you can see here, Brentford did have a much better time in front of goal in terms of expected goals, better chances in general, um, and, and probably should have got something from the game, if I'm being honest. And you can quickly see the other results here, by the way. Um, we are here. Bournemouth won 2 0. Everton beating Aston Villa away from home. I thought that was interesting. Blackburn through 5 2 against Cardiff. Chelsea have won a football game. It's a miracle. Fulham beating Norwich. West Ham going through against Lincoln City. Liverpool beating Leicester. And Man City are out. They are out. Man City cannot win the quadruple. <laughs> it's over. Very, very happy about that. But, um, yeah, honestly, didn't really enjoy watching the game for obvious reasons. It's quite stressful when you're up against a team like Brentford and we were conceding a lot of chances. So it wasn't the most enthralling game ever, but um, I'm so, so glad that we got the win and I'm so, so happy for Reese Nelson. I thought he was really good. I'd like to see him more. I think this competition alone should get him... If, if we can make it to the quarters, the semis, he should be playing every game. I really do believe that. And the final, if we make it... I like the thought of having some consistency in each competition. Nelson should be our go-to winger. I, I really like that. Um, and I was really happy to see Smith throw in. Smith throw back in the side. Should have scored, actually, in the first half. He had a couple of good moments. Um, again, more minutes for him, please. And what did we think of Sago Jr.? I thought it was a pretty average performance, but the guy is so young, and um, I'm sure he'll be absolutely buzzing. He's just played for Arsenal Football Club. Right, so I've put out my usual Operation Arsenal tweet. We've got um, AFC Owen saying it was a decent game. Thought we were really good in the first half, not too bad in the second. ESR has to start against Bournemouth. Thought he was really good today. Much better value. Uh, no, what? <laughs> Where am I getting the word value? Much better than what Havertz was. Nelson looks sharp as, sharp as usual. Would like to see him get some minutes on Saturday as well. I'm guessing that is, yeah. I mean, I, I do agree. I wouldn't say it was a decent game, though. I thought it was stressful as hell. Um, I don't understand how we are world-class at defending when we play away, but when we play at home, it's like we're Luton. It's so true. Away from home, we're so much better at, at keeping clean sheets and just defending. I, I don't know what it is. And actually, no, maybe I do. It's, it's a mentality thing. I really do believe that. When we're at home, we're more comfortable. You've got the crowd behind you. You kind of just drift a little bit i feel like you're kind of drifting through the moments whereas when you're away from home you're in different you're in enemies grounds you know and, and i think you're just naturally more you're more focused you're not you're not in your comfort zone and you're really kind of switched on it's like right as soon as that whistle goes i'm on it and i do believe that that is definitely a comfortability thing at home i thought we were very lucky especially in the second half on another day that could have been a 2-1 or 3-1 brentford it's very true but we also had chances on another day. We could have scored three. Um, overall performance, seven out of 10 from Grassy here. Grassy, Grassy. First half had control of the game. Then in the second, it was a grind. Ramsdale was superb. Back four were a brick wall. Yeah, I quite liked Zinchenko when he came on. He made one misplaced pass, which wasn't good. But the quality he provided going forward um, and the way that Kivior then stepped into that centre-back role, quality. Havertz needs to find some confidence. Really agree with that. Jorginho midfield, too easy to get past. I mean, it's a lack of pace, isn't it? But he's he's smart up here. He knows where to be. And Ketty needs to take his chances. Yeah, I feel like Jesus should be starting the next game. I really do. I think Nketiah, whilst he works hard and he does score, he's just not... I don't know. At Bournemouth, I would like to see Jesus or against Bournemouth. Um, certain players are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we need better depth. Sign Tiago Almada in my career mode, I'm guessing you mean. He doesn't have a real face. It sucks. Nelson is on fire. His work rate is just amazing. Yeah, there was a moment after he scored, actually, he ran the whole pitch to defend one of the next attacks, and I thought that was so good to see. Really appreciated that. Um, God, so many comments to go through here. I think, I think most people are thinking the same thing that it wasn't a particularly good game but we've gone to Brentford and we've picked up a win I mean that that's a big thing it really is and Man City are out who would we like in the next round I would happily take a Fulham a Blackburn an Everton Bournemouth 
I'll take Man United. We'll beat them. Burnley. <laughs> There's obviously quite a few other teams that went through yesterday that we could get. But um, what do we think about this as a competition? Do we genuinely want to target the, the EFL Cup? It's not particularly exciting, is it? But it is a it is a trophy nonetheless. And it it's a good way for other players to get into the side if they're not normally, you know. And I, I do believe that rotating the squad is a healthy thing. It's not always bad having lots of games keeping match sharpness up getting the the youngsters action it's not always a bad thing but of course the more fixtures you've got the more congestion you've got the more injuries you get it's a tiresome prospect you know and we're going into the winter months soon where things get even more hectic so put it this way if we did get a tough draw and we were to get knocked out it wouldn't be the end of the world but also I'm always happy to see Arsenal progress. This is a, a trophy we can win and we wouldn't need the entire first team every game. Not until later on, at least. If we were to get the top sides near the quarters, semi and maybe the final, then yeah, sure. You're not going to rotate as much. But players like Nelson, I think Jorginho will get more time in this competition as well and Kivior um, and Smith Rowe. That's great. But um, ultimately, guys, not the most exciting game, but we are through. And roll on Bournemouth at the weekend.